been through to it. So I recently flew my bike to Armenia from the UK and I thought what better opportunity to show you how I pack a bike for flying, specifically a touring or bike packing bike. This is how I do it. There are many schools of thought on the subject, but this is the one that has been working for me over the last few years. And I will be using as packaging for the bike, literally a clear plastic bag. This was actually bought from the Cycle Touring Club of Great Britain. It's a uh, sp cycling specific bike bag. Definitely check with your airline before using this method as some airlines do specify certain types of packaging, certain rules and regulations. This may not fit all of them, but if it does, then it's probably the simplest, and in my experience, the safest way to get a bike on a flight. So you're gonna need a roll of duct tape or gaffer tape or whatever you wanna call it, some cable ties, some pipe lagging, get this from any hardware store, builders merchants, it's for insulating uh, water pipes so they don't freeze in winter, scissors, uh, basic tools, and a cup of tea. I've already dragged mine. Um, but I will get another at some point during this process. First thing to do is to prepare the bicycle. This involves taking some bits off it, um, adjusting the position of some other bits and securing it all for transit. We're going to start by lowering the seat. Easy. Now the pedals. So I like to choose pedals that have a Allen key fitting on the uh, rear end of the axle. And don't forget that the non-drive side pedal is reverse threaded. So lefty loosey, righty tighty on the drive side and the opposite on the non-drive side. Next is the handlebars, which most airlines will ask you to rotate 90 degrees. What you actually want is for the front wheel to remain in alignment with the frame and the end of the handlebar to be directly over the top tube. What that means is that you can then strap the two together, nice and secure, enough movement for things to not get broken uh, while the bike's being inevitably chucked around. Another trick is to ever so slightly loosen the clamp bolts for the brake levers and gear shifters so that if they do get a knock, instead of something snapping off, they just move around the handlebar. Right, let's come back down to the cranks. Now, I normally position the cranks so that on the drive side, looking inwards of the bike, we are at about nine o'clock, or in other words, the crank arm end, where the pedal was, is lined up nicely with the chain stay. These are 4.8 mil cable ties, so they're relatively strong. The rear derailleur, I always unscrew it and strap it to the chainstay because it's by far the most vulnerable moving part on the bike. 5mm Allen key, make sure you're in the small sprocket before you start and it comes off very easily and then you can wheel it along to wherever is convenient. Just strap it all on, bit of movement but nothing is slack, the chain's nice and taut, um, it's attached in a couple of different places and that should be good to go. In case you're wondering, yes, I do like to leave my cable ties full length um, because it means I can reuse them. I have taken off the bottle cages and the lights. So I've got my little box of accessories here, which I will stick in a jiffy bag and put in my checked baggage. Um, now it's time to protect the frame. This stuff is good for two things. Uh, it's good for stopping your water pipes freezing in winter and it's good for protecting the frame of your bike when you're flying with it. Airlines also will tell you to deflate the tyres. Now I recommend part deflating them down to about maybe 10 psi or basically soft enough that when you squidge the tyre with your fingers it looks flat but actually there's enough air in there to protect the rims because if you let all the air out then you're actually making those bits of the bike quite vulnerable. So just leave a little bit of air in for protection and the airlines will be absolutely fine with that. One very well used CCC bike bag. It's pretty huge. 
I think one of the reasons this works so well is because baggage handlers see a bicycle, whereas if you put it in a box, they see a box, and they probably psychologically think, mm, bicycles are slightly more fragile than boxes, better be careful with this one. Um, that's my theory. If you are a baggage handler and you beg to differ, please let us all know. All right, there it is. Um, doesn't look very glamorous, does it? But it does look like a bicycle. And all of the rules and regulations have been complied with and all of the vulnerable parts have been protected. So that really is about as much as you can do. One thing I have done is I've given the baggage handlers one, two very obvious places to grab the bike. Time to tape it up and then we will actually put it on a plane. I've got a game there. I'll be Thanks darling. Huh? All right, here we are at the other end. Um, I've literally just pulled the bike out of its bag. I haven't even looked to it yet. Um, let's see how it uh, survives. So what do we do? We lower the saddle. The saddle is still attached. Those marks were there before. So with those, the rails have not been snapped. Uh, so that's looking pretty good. Handlebars we turn 90 degrees or just over. They seem to be pretty much exactly the way I left them. Um, looks like all the various clamped on controls are good. Let's give the brakes a squeeze. Yep, they're still biting. So, yeah, same on that side. So they haven't lost any hydraulic fluid. Um, this was sticking out the top of the bag and actually, if you look closely, you can see a tiny bit of scuffing on what the edge of one spacer. So that maybe could have used a little bit of extra padding as it was a uh, one of the most prominent pieces of metal sticking out. The uh, handlebar that was sticking out at the end, that looks exactly as it did when I put it in, i.e. with about 6,000 miles of riding on it. Wheels, tyres, got a bit of air in still. Everything's looking good, I can't see any snapped spokes. And the frame is looking undented and clean. Down here, the crank is still where we left it. And here, everything is again pretty much exactly as we left it. The chain is still on the bottom, a uh, small sprocket. And again, the wheels look like they've survived unscathed and without any broken spokes. Let's have a quick look. The hydraulic hoses, or the one hydraulic hose at the back, looks like it's not been torn out or bent or kinked in any way. So, uh, first glance, that's a pretty good result. So the bike, the Outlander, obviously um, doesn't have racks or mud guards or um, attachments for handlebar bags or anything like that that you might find on a touring bike. It also didn't have any bike packing luggage attached to it. But worth saying that with this method where you leave the bike essentially complete, <clears throat> you can leave all of that stuff attached. Um, and that's a huge bonus uh, in terms of efficiency and keeping the bike safe. Um, with a box, uh, you normally have to take off the, the fenders or mud guards, um, depending on whether you're American or British, and the rack, at least the front rack, just because the uh, the dimensions won't actually fit in a regular bike box. With this method, you can leave all of that attached. Um, again, the only thing you really need to do is turn the handlebars, lower the saddle, tidy up the drivetrain, take off the pedals, and make sure it's all secure. So that's a really big uh, benefit of using this method. Once again, I hope this has come in useful for you if you're planning on flying your bike anywhere this year or any other time in the future while YouTube still exists. All right, see you later.